Today, we're diving deep into the world of website design. We are gonna cover all the top industries for websites and which platform is best for your industry. And as we go through it, we're gonna explore strengths, best use cases, and things to consider when you're getting started with every platform. Let's get started. Starting at the bottom of the list, I'm gonna start with number five, Wix. This one I would call the jack of all trades, but the master of none. Wix has been popular for a lot of years because it's a user-friendly drag and drop interface and it has a massive template library. It's really friendly in terms of getting started and if you've never built a website before, getting something out there, but there's a few things to consider when you use Wix. The best use case for Wix would be if you are a beginner trying to get a site up quickly and you want to be able to customize specific controls over time. Now, the best way to describe Wix is kind of like Apple versus Windows. If you really like Windows, you'll probably like Wix a lot. But if you really like Apple, you'll probably like Squarespace. It's gonna be more simple, intuitive, and it's not gonna, it's gonna restrict you a bit where it won't give you as many options. But because of that, you'll be able to have a pretty decent design quickly with Squarespace, where Wix is gonna be a little bit more cumbersome. The benefit there is long-term, if you wanna customize very unique, specific things, you could do it much easier in Wix without writing any code. So if you're a local bakery, a photographer, uh, you're gonna start a personal blog, any of these things, Wix could be a great place to start as well as Squarespace, but the main difference there is gonna be in the terms of how customizable you're gonna to wanna to make specific things, specific sections. Now, the biggest thing to consider is Wix and Wix Studio. Technically, Wix has two platforms that you could build on and whichever platform you choose will be a different experience. So if you choose the regular Wix experience, that'll be more a custom, more in line with Squarespace. But if you choose Wix Studio, it's gonna be more of an experience like Webflow or Framer, two other platforms we'll talk about in this video. This kind of complicates things because maybe you want a cool feature that's in Wix Studios, but you don't need that level of complexity throughout your website. If you're new to website design, it may be really difficult. Honestly, my two cents is probably just go to Squarespace unless there is a very core feature that Wix has that Squarespace doesn't, but we'll get to Squarespace in a minute. Let's go to number four. Now, number four, Webflow. This is what I call the designer's playground. Webflow is where design meets power. It's the best website builder out there for creatives, agencies, and businesses that crave complete control of their online presence. The best use case is gonna be perfect for building visually stunning websites with great animations. Overall, it's a beautiful platform and you could do basically anything you want with it. Alongside its custom CMS, which is again, its content management system, it allows you to scale and build a site that is unique and exactly the way you want it. The challenge is this. You need to understand classes, Flexbox and become semi-proficient in language around animation. Let me explain. The learning curve it takes to get started on Webflow is pretty complex. If you don't understand divs and how sections work, you're gonna get lost quickly, build things that don't scale well, that only work on desktop, but don't work on mobile, that don't, adjust the way they're supposed to, and then get really frustrated. The animations are really cool as well, but again, it takes a high level of experience or high touch experience to really get the best features from it. It's not really just a click and a drag and you're done. There's a lot more work that needs to be done to really understand how to build a beautiful site. And honestly, in my recommendation, I think some of it, especially for a non-web person, is gonna be very convoluted and hard to understand to do the things you wanna do. It's gonna get complex quick for things that should be simple. It's great if you're like an Adobe person, you love Illustrator or Photoshop or high levels of control in terms of every little detail and you need to export the code later. Honestly, Webflow is gonna get you there. It'll help you do animations without sitting there and writing every line of code, which is awesome. At that high level of operation, it is amazing. It also scales really, really well but it's kind of like a false hope where they present themselves as so beautiful and elegant and the experience is wonderful and you get in the back end and it's like, you literally are doing everything from scratch, which is awesome because you have full control, but sucks because you have to do everything from scratch. So there's a lot there to take in and Webflow is best if 
you kind of fall in a few of these categories. So the best use cases will be if you're a designer, an agency, you really want a beautiful website, or you're trying to build some type of directory with a high functioning uh, custom CMS. So say you're building a directory that has certain properties for each of the items and elements. Uh, let's say you were showing off homes, for example, and you need to create a custom way to show like the price of the home and the price has gone up or it's down or whatever, and you need to create a fully custom CMS. Framer and Webflow are the best here, but Webflow has been doing it a little bit longer than Framer. Framer is a little bit newer in this. However, Webflow is really powerful. Once you get it set up, it can operate at a really cool rate and build really cool Cool website experiences honestly pretty easy once you learn it so if it takes you 50 hours to learn that initial part then you're good to go but if you're not willing to do that initial 50 hours it's gonna be a bit difficult now let's talk about number three number three is Shopify this is what I would call the e-commerce king Shopify is the undisputed champion of e-commerce and there's really no way around it full stop period if you're serious about selling online, Shopify is the go-to platform. It's having your own digital storefront that can scale to any size you need. I'm telling you, if you are selling products online, you want to use Shopify. The only challenge is their actual website design experience is harder and probably you'll need to hire a developer to really get the most out of it. But if you want to use a basic website, get the basic features, but be integrated into the entire Shopify ecosystem, Shopify honestly is incredible. Think back to the last e-commerce product you bought off of that was not Amazon or Nike or Apple or something like that. It most likely was on a Shopify store and on the Shopify platform. What's really cool about Shopify, what I really boast about is like, if I've never been to your store before, what I get really excited about, if I go to checkout on your store and I have my information there, it'll automatically populate all my information onto your store. So it is literally a one-click checkout for me. That user experience is phenomenal. You don't get that with Squarespace. You don't get that with Wix. They're trying to integrate it with like Stripe Link and some stuff is coming out, but Shopify does it at a whole nother level. And all the other features around e-commerce, like abandoned cart emails and other aspects of it that you're gonna want to integrate. I highly, highly recommend Shopify at the highest level. The biggest challenge is the design experience is gonna be harder to get started than other platforms to really customize it and build it the way you like. Now let's talk about number two, Squarespace. This is what I would call the most aesthetic choice with the best user experience. Squarespace is a website builder for creatives, artists, and businesses of any type that want a visual appeal and an easy user experience. Squarespace has been my go-to platform for clients because I know once I deliver a website to them, if they need to edit the text or adjust a bit of content, replace a photo, anything like that, it's very easy for them to do and have a website that they absolutely love. Whether you're a photographer, a business, a consultant, a therapist, Squarespace is a great platform. Honestly, for most people watching this video, my number one recommendation is going to be Squarespace. The reality is it's gonna get you up and running live. You could always go to a different platform later on if you have a business that's scaling and you have money, more money to put into it. Whatever the case may be, Squarespace is a great place to start for most websites. The ones I would say it's not a good place to start is if you wanna do any type of say um, directory like we talked about before with Webflow, custom directory. If you wanna do some like community based like chats and conversations in a website, there's probably tools out there that you could prefer to use versus even a website platform. But if you're looking to do something like that, those platforms are a bit different. Even like the blogging feature is nice on Squarespace, but any major blog I've seen at a certain point gets off of Squarespace because the reality is it just, it gets harder to scale the way you like at a certain point. But again, 80% of clients are gonna use Squarespace and have a great time. The biggest downfalls will probably be like animations. There's no real features for animations. They have like four presets for animations that cover your whole website. And generally, I just don't think they're that great. You don't have a lot of control at all. You have like no control actually. You just click one button and it affects your whole website. And if you like it, great. If you don't, 
you can't really do much about it. And then trying to code animations is just a ton of work to add that to your website. And before we go to the first and last one of this video, I do want to say I have a ton of links down below that could be great resources for you if you are looking to build your website. So definitely check those out. Now let's go to number one, Framer. This is what I like to call the future of website design. This is huge. Framer has really changed the game in website design and other companies are now trying to keep up with them. Yes, all these companies I've mentioned do do updates to their platform very consistently. They even drop videos and try to do cool introductions for all the new innovative features they're adding to their platform. The challenge is none of them are as innovative and as cool as Framer. Just as an example, Framer recently just released this new feature to use and leverage variable fonts on your website in a really cool and unique way. They're really introducing an innovative way to design websites that other platforms are struggling to keep up with. It's the new kid on the block, but it's honestly picking up a lot of attention in the website designer community. Whether you're an innovator or a pioneer, Framer is a great place to showcase your website and it's a great way to scale. The challenge is Framer does have a learning curve. It has a learning curve similar to Webflow, but I would cut the time in half. So if it would take you 30 to 50 hours to get started on Webflow, it will probably take you 10, 15, maybe 10 to 25 hours to get set up on Framer. Now, in comparison to Webflow, both of these tools are kind of the closest to each other in terms of their user experience, but I would say without a shadow of a doubt, Webflow has more history because it's been in the market longer, but honestly, Framer is way more innovative and user-friendly. They got rid of the verbiage of classes and flex boxes. They still use that, so you could leverage it fully. You get the full benefit of website design, without any confusing jargon or language that doesn't make sense if you're not a web developer. You don't have to remember certain classes. Like that part gets really obnoxious quick. Light and dark mode is built in. There's a lot of cool features that they're navigating and building into the platform. And if you've ever used Figma, you are gonna love Framer. It basically is the same exact interface, but for website design. The one thing I love the most is that every other platform forces you to only see one screen at a time. Which, if it's your first time doing this, that might make more sense. But if you've built websites for a while, you'll want to see your desktop, your tablet, and your mobile experience at the same time. Like, why not? You do that in Figma, why can't you do it on your website builder? And Framer allows you to do that. I really can't say it enough. Framer is the future of the internet, and why not get started on a platform that might be a little bit more of a learning curve, but it will give you so much more expressibility and design options as you grow. You'll be able to build a stunning website, have full control over animations, make it interactive, make it a beautiful experience, while at the same time being able to scale it quickly. Now, I have discount links down below for any of these platforms, so check out those links down below. Just click on them. It is a referral link, but it'll also get you set up to get started on your site with any of these platforms. And if you're looking for support on Squarespace or Framer, this channel, and I may launch another channel for Framer, is a great place to go for you to get all the advice, tips, and tricks to build a beautiful, gorgeous website and look like a million bucks online.